Hey everyone, um, this is Peter Wildman. I'm one of the studio leaders in um, visual, uh, sorry, Emergent Practices. Um, I told my class that I'd just do a quick demo of some basic sound editing, um, just in case you wanted to record some sounds um, alongside your um, spoken narrative for your assessments. Um, yeah, because I'm, I'm not sure if you get much um, uh, tutoring in in sound editing and stuff like that. So this is just a really basic kind of introduction um, of how to bring in some sound files to this program called Audacity, which is a free open source, um, a cross-platform sound editing um, uh, program. And yeah, so I'm just going to be showing you how to bring some sounds in, how to edit them a little bit. Um, cut them into separate parts and then move them around. I might show you how to play around with the different kind of gains or audio levels and a few little techniques um, on um, when you start to kind of cut bits of sound up and move them around, um, how to make it so it doesn't sound like when you're listening back to it that there's little edits through the sound. Um, so yeah, if you want to learn a bit about that, just stick with me here and I'll go through it. But you just need to go and download Audacity, um, and um, if you just Google Audacity, it should be the first result. The download section has um, the different platforms. Um, Mac is what I'm on, and it gives you the current version. And if you see here, you look for this um, DMG file, and that's um, the installation file. This will take you to another page, um, just scroll down a touch, and then you'll have the installers here. And these are the different installers, one for Windows, Mac OS, that's the one I want there. So I download that one, and I've already done this process, but you just open that DMG file like any other software, and then drag the app into your um, applications. So I've already done that, um, and um, so I've already got Audacity on here. So if I just quickly go to my applications and type in A, see here is Audacity. So I can just double click and it'll open up. So you might get a little welcome message, but that's fine. Just say OK, um, and we're all set. Um, so what I've done, and I've um, previously done this, and um, so I've already got these files ready, is I've um, just for this exercise recorded myself kind of opening the fridge and getting a glass from the cupboard and filling it with some water. Um, so that's I've done just through my mobile phone, and you can use any you know mobile phone recording app. Mine had the ability where I could press pause, so it was kind of nice. So you'll see that I've recorded all the sound bits in one file, but after I recorded myself opening the door, for example, I pushed pause, and then I went and recorded the next part and the next part, so the track's quite um, close together. So. Yeah, something like that could be handy, but otherwise you could have just a whole range of sounds that you've recorded previously as separate sound files. Um, one other thing you'll see, um, I recorded um, one other file, which is, I guess, a little tip um, when trying to edit sounds together, is I just recorded the room. Okay, so I tr had no one home, I just put my phone on the, um, the kitchen table and I hit record. And I just recorded the sound of the room, which was not much sound at all, but you'll be surprised as it has an effect. I just recorded the sound of the room for, I think, two minutes. But what this little trick does is when you start to edit sounds and cut bits of sounds out and arrange them, you want to have some kind of atmosphere running constantly underneath your recording because the absolute silence of no sound on a computer through your headphones is very empty. So you'll start to hear, if you don't have that kind of background atmosphere, you might start to hear it, like, you know, a sound happen, and then, and then something happen, and then you'll hear those moments where you don't hear sound more. So just a, record like a, a five minute piece of just put your phone outside and have the atmosphere sounds going. And I would recommend always just running that underneath your whole narrative and that would be really handy for you. So they're the two sound files that I've got here. Um, I've created a folder called narrative. I would recommend always creating a folder that you have for your project. So that's what these two files are. I'll just drag them into um, Audacity 
and you'll see that they've then dropped in to Audacity. Now the first thing I do always is save out a project. Okay, so when you hit Command S or go File Save, this isn't saving out a sound file, this is saving the project. So just click OK, that's like a little warning box it gives you. And I'm gonna call this Narrative. And I'm gonna save that in that Narrative folder I've created. Cool. And so you'll see that it's created a .aup file and that's the project file for um, this. It also has created this narrative underscore data, which it uses for itself. So don't move any of these two files and keep everything contained within this one folder and you should be fine. Cool. So you'll see that um, in Audacity here, um, you have these two tracks. So here's one and here's the other. Um, I'll show you around just a few of the things in the interface. Um, here are the, the main tools we'll be using up here at the top. Um, we'll also be using this space here. So this one you can give a name, so I'm going to rename that. And I'm just going to call that um, uh, water filling. And here I can just call that background sound. Okay. Um, and yeah, this is the panning. So this whole track, you can pan it left or right. And we get to this in a second, but you can, this is called the gain. Be really careful with this though, because if you go too far up, the computer won't stop it from being really loud and you could blow your speakers, you could blow your headphones. So just be really careful with the gain. Okay. Um, and we will have to use that because as you notice, see these little peaks here? Um, these are actually the bits of sound we've recorded. So the higher the peaks, the louder they are. And I think pretty sure here is the kind of sound range here. Um, and you'll notice that this track is quieter. So you might need to turn this track up a little bit. And this is just that ambient background sound. Or you might need to turn this track down a little bit. And you can do that by yeah using this gain. But once again, be careful going upwards, don't go up too much without having a quick test to see if um, it's too loud. Cool. So yeah, um, this space here is where we're going to be doing the editing and we're going to use these tools up here to kind of edit those, those this space here. Um, nice. Well, I usually also like to keep my environment that I'm working in like kind of easy for me to read. So. If I go up with these, you can move this up and down, which makes it, you can have a few more tracks in here and it not be too too big. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly run through the tool I'll be using. So here's this selection tool, which means you can click anywhere along this, um, what's called playhead, okay? And you'll see the line kind of ends up there. That's gonna be handy for us. You can also select a piece of audio and um, that's going to be handy. So that's that tool. Um, this tool is the move tool. And so you can move a piece of track back and forth. That's going to be really handy for us as well. Just to move bits of audio along the, queue, the area. Um, and the zoom tool. So just to click in to certain areas. Oops, sorry. Just to click into certain areas. Or you can zoom so your screen fills with that particular piece of sound. So actually we're going to be kind of editing and navigating around these little kind of peaks of sound. If you hit control on the Mac and zoom again, and you click with the zoom tool, you'll zoom out um, as well. Cool. Um, so just to kind of get around, you can just use your trackpad or your mouse um, to kind of go back and forth between, um, yeah, between um, the length, sorry, along the length of the audio, or you can zoom all the way out. Cool. So the first thing um, I'm going to get you to do is just, yeah, play out your sound. So um, if you go to a start point and hit spacebar, you'll hear the sounds play. Um, and that's some footsteps I was walking away from. Uh, that's me opening the fridge door and closing it putting the cup on the table, 
the door. Open the cupboard door to get the glass. And yeah. Put the glass down, open the water bottle. And the soothing sound of pouring the water. As you were playing that, you saw this kind of coming up here, the green bars. You don't want it to reach into the red zone, which will be um, distortion because it'll be too loud. So if you ever see it go into the red zone and you know what track's doing that, then you can use this gain section to turn the volume down. And then so it, it'll stay out of the red zone. Same if you've got lots of sounds playing at once, the collective playing of them all might send this into that red zone, which will make the speakers distort. It will kind of sound crackly and you don't want that. So you turn your gains down. Turn your gains down, simply just a slider there and you'll notice now, oh, let's turn it down even more, that starts getting quieter. And those will go less up. So you want it around just the edge of the green into the yellow which is a good area for it to be. Um, cool. So just hitting spacebar is how to play. That's that kind of sound area there. Um, you can play just one piece of audio with this selection tool. You just select what you want to hear. And it'll stop for you. So you can quickly just go in, select something, listen to what it is. Okay, that was that one. That's that one. So this is like me quickly going through to think about what piece of audio I might want to take and put somewhere else. Okay, cool. So now that we've got that, um, I just want to quickly also show you these buttons. So solo, if you click solo on one of these tracks, so think of these as separate tracks, it'll mute everything else and you'll just hear this one. Click solo again, unmutes the other ones. Or you can singularly mute a track and then all of the others will stay um, there. So that's that one there. Um, and that's it for that section. What we'll be doing is going up here to these menus at the top and saying tracks, add a new, and you can create a mono track or a stereo track. If you see here the top and the bottom in this one track, that's stereo, the top one being the left, the bottom one being the right. Um, if you only see one in here, then you know you've got a mono track, which just means it hasn't recorded left and right, which is also okay. You can have mono tracks and it'll just play across the other two. We only have the stereo track really if we want to do panning or if we have like two microphones where we want to get some spatial, which is a bit too advanced for this. So let's not worry about that. Just know that if you've got two bits of audio, then you need to create a um, stereo track. So if you've got one, just create a mono track. So here, a new stereo track. And here it creates, once again, quite big, so I can use this to make it smaller. Creates a blank track. So this one doesn't have any audio on it at all. Okay, so remember this is my background audio. I'm just gonna leave that there. I can kind of not even think about it. Uh, I should, might be able to know. You can't drag that down. If you click down here, you can say move track down like that. And so that kind of, for me in my head, that's my least priority. I'm just gonna keep that there. And that's just gonna be my background kind of atmosphere. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you how then we can isolate each different thing that you've recorded. Cause you might record, have recorded lots of stuff and you wanna move it around so it's timing is different. So let's say I'm going to now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you a couple of different ways to isolate the audio. So here, is this any? That was me walking after getting set up. So this is my first bit of audio here that I want to utilize. Um, so a non-destructive way of doing it is actually to, to not delete any of this track at all. And we can just mute it at some point, um, but actually to like just kind of take the bits we want and put them on a, a separate track. So I can select that piece of audio, which is me opening the fridge and hit Command C, which is copy, and then paste it down here. So now I have this piece of audio. Um, ultimately, I could say mute that top one and just play. So now I could use this tool oops, this one, to move it around anywhere along the piece of recording that I want it. Um, so keep in mind you'll have your own track recording your sound, um, your, your voiceover. Cool. Um, you can then use this again to copy 
and paste. And so you can have multiple um, multiple bits here. Um, something I didn't talk about, but um, is very important when taking these little slices of audio, I'm going to zoom in for a quick second. So zoom, remember you can select an area that you want to fill the whole space. See, um, if I'm going to, I'm going to zoom all the way in here because this is where my sound starts. See, there's these bits of the line that have no kind of bumps at all. Um, ultimately, this is where there is no sound happening. So what is good practice is to actually make sure that you're, when you're editing a piece of sound, to make sure you edit a point where there is no sound happening. So if you edit the sound here, what will happen is, um, this this kind of sound wave that you're seeing won't have a chance to go from nothing up to that point it'll just start abruptly from wherever it is that you've edited it so what 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 you actually what that actually comes out as is a popping noise you'll hear a pop when that sound gets played and what that actually is is the speaker trying to go straight to a point that's either you know is a very far distance from zero so this is the speaker actually at these points is the speaker resting it's not actually moving and when a sound wave comes the speaker moves up and down and that's how the sound comes so if we go straight to something that's quite far away from resting point for the speaker it does it really quickly and the pop is actually you hearing the speaker's material going pop because it's moving up so quickly that you hear the, the speaker itself. So we want to, the, the moral of the story is here, we want to get to this point where there's nothing, so then we don't hear that pop sound. And a lot of glitch musician artists actually try and create those pop sounds to actually use in compositions, but we don't want that. So um, it's a bit hard now that I'm zoomed in here to select all of the sound so if you do want to be really you know precise and come in and edit it right at the starting point on that part there's another um, tool that you can do so if you go edit and you go clip boundaries um, or command I here and say split it'll actually split these two parts of sound here so now they're separate so if I go back to zoom hit control and zoom out um, I can go here to the end, so I'm going to zoom back in, and that's the end of that sound. I can go here, and go edit, put boundaries split, and I've got another line here. So I'm going to zoom out. Cool. Now I can double click on that area, and I've selected that area, that specific area that I've split. And I can hit Command C and Command V, and I've copied that specific boundary area. So you can do that as well um, if you want to. It's for the same purpose. Um, but that's ultimately it. You can just then go through. I'm going to be very rough and just take out all the different bits of audio. And, you know, take all the bits of the sound recordings that you want. And then we can just start to rearrange them. You know, we can make them play quickly. We can duplicate them. So as I said before, you can select, copy, paste, paste, paste. I'll mute this one. So you can start to then arrange your sounds as you want, and that's where you create, I guess, your story of sound, you know, if you're going to record sounds around your house and you want to, you know, start to then edit that around and have like this kind of, you know, soundscape that you create, and um, that's how you do it. And you can ultimately create many tracks, so we could create lots of stereo tracks, track, add new, stereo track. Um, I would say the one interface kind of difficulty with Audacity is it doesn't feel like it, you've got enough as much space as you do with other um, audio editing software. But once again, free and open source, so you don't have to pay for it. So you could actually have each of these sounds on different levels, and they can then play over. 
play over the top of each other. Um, and you can start to layer things like this. So once you've got all of these um, kind of designed or arranged and you've got your audio track in there, um, the last oh, you can just keep saving as you go, keep Command S. Um, the last thing you want to do, and I'm going to zoom out so we can see the entirety of our track. Okay, so here we're at about, if we click on this, uh, this bit here was me walking up and stopping the recording. Another thing you can just simply do if you do want to delete sound is just select it and hit the delete button and it'll just delete it for you. Um, but yeah, so that's about there and it's got like 1 minute and 16 seconds, so that's the time here. Um, and you can just select all, so go Command A and it will only select where the sound comes to, to this point. And then you can go File, Export, and WAV is a high um, quality sound file, so I'd recommend WAV. And in sounds, you're pretty safe um, file size wise, it's not going to make a huge difference. So I'd export as a WAV file, and I'm going to put that on the desktop, narrative. Dot wav. You can just leave it all as its defaults. This is all just different encoding, but I think 16 bits fine. So hit save. Okay. So what this means, your tracks will be mixed down and exported as one stereo file, which means that we can't open that wav file and continue to edit it. That's where the the, the project file is. What we need to maintain to do that. So we just say okay. We can add some metadata in if we want to. So. Okay, uh, maybe that's done it already. Usually it shows you a progress box, but it's quite quick. There you go, there it is. And that's our sound file mixed out. So it's only going to be about 14, 15 megabytes. So WAV is good, especially if you're going to then bring that into your vodcast you're eventually going to have to export that as mp4 or you're going to put it on uh, like if you ever end up ever putting it on like a youtube or a vimeo it'll it'll um, compress that sound for you anyway so keeping it high um, quality is is good 